My name is Diasha. In our previous lesson, we did some experiments to see what happens when alkali metals react with pure oxygen. What we observed was that the metals burned with distinctive coloured flames and that a white metal oxide formed as a product. We also practiced a very important skill we have been developing. The skill of writing balanced chemical equations will be useful to you throughout all your studies of chemistry. Let's recap the steps to writing a balanced reaction equation. Step 1. Write a word equation for the reaction. Reactants are placed on the left, products on the right, and in the middle, the arrow. Step 2. Change the word equation into a chemical equation. This is where your knowledge of elemental symbols and of writing formulae will be most useful. Step 3. Check that the number of atoms of each element on the left of the arrow is equal to the number of atoms of each element on the right of the arrow. Step 4. Balance the equation by writing numbers in front of the formula. We will be writing balanced equations throughout this series. To practice your skills, let's see if you were able to successfully write down the equations for the reactions I gave you for task 1. You should have started by writing a word equation for the reaction of sodium and oxygen. Sodium plus oxygen react to form sodium oxide. This word equation then has to be changed into a chemical equation. The symbol for sodium is Na. Remember that oxygen is a diatomic molecule and is written as O2. The formula of sodium oxide is Na2O. Now we need to check if the equation is balanced. Let's start by counting the number of atoms of oxygen. There are two oxygen atoms on the left and only one on the right. To balance this, we need to have two sodium oxide particles in the product. We write a 2 in front of the formula Na2O. However, we now have four sodium particles on the right and only one on the left. So, we need to show that there are four sodium atoms on the left. We do this by writing a 4 in front of the Na. I would like you to compare the two equations we have balanced so far. 4Li plus O2 react to form 2Li2O and 4Na plus O2 react to form 2Na2O. Do you notice a pattern? Can you predict how the balanced equation for the reaction of potassium and oxygen will be? Congratulations if your answer looked like this. 4K plus O2 react to form 2K2O. We have now thoroughly examined how alkali metals react with pure oxygen. In this lesson, we will look at compounds that contain alkali metals. Here are the outcomes for today's lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify common everyday substances containing alkali metals. Recall what the chemical properties of the oxides of alkali metals are. Do you remember that when we reacted the alkali metals and oxygen, we saved the metal oxides formed for further testing. Let's use these white substances to determine what the chemical properties of these metal oxides are. To do this, we will test their solubility. In other words, we will check whether they dissolve completely in water or not. We will also test the solution to determine whether it is acidic or basic. Before we start our experiments, I would like to remind you what the terms acid and base mean. An acid is a substance that has a pH value less than 7, while a base is a substance that, on dissolving in water, has a pH value greater than 7. So, what we need to do is add water to the metal oxides that we've saved from our previous experiments and give the gas jars a good shake. We will then use red litmus paper as an indicator to determine whether the product that forms is an acid or a base. Red litmus paper will turn blue if the solution is a base, 
and remain red if it is an acid. First, we add water to the jar containing the lithium oxide and shake it. The lithium oxide is soluble in water. The red litmus paper turns blue. This means that the solution is basic. When we repeat the experiment with the sodium oxide and the potassium oxide, we find that the results are the same. Both sodium and potassium oxide dissolve completely in water and in both instances the red litmus paper turns blue, indicating that both the solutions are basic. But what happens to a chemical when it dissolves in water to form a basic solution? The answer is actually quite simple. A chemical reaction takes place. The alkali metals react with water to form the product metal hydroxide. Let's have a look at the word equations for the reactions that we have observed. Lithium oxide plus water react to form lithium hydroxide. Sodium oxide plus water react to form sodium hydroxide. Potassium oxide plus water react to form potassium hydroxide. The next step is to convert the word equations into chemical equations. Here's a tip. The formula for water is H2O and the formula for lithium hydroxide is LiOH. So the word equation lithium oxide plus water react to form lithium hydroxide will become Li2O plus H2O react to form LiOH. We now need to check that the equation is balanced. Remember, we count the number of atoms of each element on each side of the arrow. So for us to have a balanced equation, we will need to double the number of atoms on the right-hand side. We do this by writing in a 2 in front of the LiOH. Notice that the ratio of the molecule is in the simplest form. So this balanced chemical equation is an accurate representation of the chemical change we have observed. Let's also go through the sodium oxide's reaction with water together. The word equation is sodium oxide plus water react to form sodium hydroxide, which will become Na2O plus H2O react to form NaOH. Now, let's count the number of atoms of each element on each side of the arrow. Two atoms of sodium, oxygen and hydrogen on the left, but only one of each on the right. We know that atoms can never be destroyed or created during a chemical reaction, so we must be missing something in the product. The only product formed is sodium hydroxide. This means there must be another particle of sodium hydroxide formed. To show this additional particle, we fill in a 2 in front of the NaOH. So the balanced equation for this reaction is Na2O plus H2O react to form 2NaOH. Once again, there's a pattern emerging here. Can you predict what the balanced equation for the potassium oxide and water reaction will be? The balanced equation for the reaction of potassium hydroxide and water is K2O plus H2O react to form 2KOH. So far we have focused on the reactions of the alkali metals and the oxides of the alkali metals. But did you know that there are many useful household substances containing these elements? Let's find out more in today's task. Conduct a survey to identify household products that contain alkali metals. List how each of these products is used in your home. For this task, you would need to select 10 items found in your home that contain an alkali metal. You can determine if a product contains an alkali metal by carefully reading the ingredients listed on the product's label. By tabulating all your information, you'll be quite surprised to see how these reactive metals impact our daily lives. Thank you for joining me for today's lesson. I hope to see you next time when we will be looking at the chemical reactions of the alkaline earth metals. Until then, goodbye.
Yeah. <laughs>